Ahmad Zahril uh, berusia 27 tahun dan ketika ini saya bertugas sebagai doktor di Hospital Raja Perempuan Zainab II di Kota Baru, uh, Kelantan di bawah Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia uh, dan hari ini saya akan menceritakan pengalaman saya uh, memulakan dan mengurus satu projek di uh, Sri Lanka uh, projek uh, yang mana saya panggil sebagai LIMX Uh, ianya adalah satu projek uh, memperkenalkan dan juga membawa uh, teknologi 3D printing uh, di dalam pembuatan uh, prostetik di satu kawasan uh, pasca perang uh, di utara Sri Lanka. Uh, so selepas saya tamat belajar perubatan, uh, uh, jadi saya ada tempoh menunggu untuk dipanggil masuk ke dalam sistem uh, Kementerian Kesihatan. Uh, saya telah mem- menyertai satu program yang dinamakan sebagai MyCo di mana uh, di bawah Kementerian Belia dan Sukan uh, yang mana menghantar sukarelawan sukarelawan uh, dan juga anak-anak muda ke setiap pelosok dunia uh, ke mana ke komuniti uh, yang memerlukan uh, identified uh, community dan uh, salah satu komuniti dan dan saya ditempatkan di komuniti pasca perang uh, di utara Sri Lanka uh, uh, yang mana berlaku perang saudara di antara uh, kerajaan Sri Lanka dan juga LTTE selama lebih kurang 25 ke 30 tahun dan di tempat saya uh, di, 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 diletakkan uh, merupakan um, lebih kurang uh, 40 minit daripada tempat terakhir berlakunya peperangan between us. Uh, yang mana berakhir 8 tahun dahulu. We were placed there for about two months and we have to do our own uh, need assessment lah. and then uh, we are given uh, our own authority to uh, to conduct and to start and conduct projects. Um, given that my background is in uh, in, in healthcare and medical uh, and I have uh, saya punya saya punya minat tersendiri lah. I have my own special interest in in uh, in this like new technology exponential technology innovation jadi saya uh, jadi I have been following through all of this sort of development in technology and one of the technology that caught my eye was uh, 3D printing. So I was there uh, in 2017 in 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 northern part of Sri Lanka and I was walking around trying trying to figure out uh, what can I do to help this um, what can I do to help this community and I so happened that to see there's so many amputees over there. Um, so, I decided to dig deeper. I decided to dig deeper on this particular need. And given uh, in recent years, there is an uptick of in- interest, uh, other interest in 3D printing, uh, in prosthetics, all over the world. So I decided to 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 start an experiment, uh, and using this opportunity for me being there to start an experiment to see if. This, uh, if I could bring uh, this technology to to place where it need most, you know, so to see if if there is an uh, because because I have like this hypothesis that um, you know innovation happens where there there is the the, the need is the most. So I set out uh, an experiment in the form of this project. Um, technical challenges first is uh, the cultural uh, people management. Uh, to understand uh, to understand the issue uh, of the mentality of people over there we don't even speak the language they don't even understand us uh, the second uh, it, w- it was pretty hard second we are trying to raise the deadline uh, i was there for two months only uh, to try to start the to ignite this project so and then they you know we have rather different uh, working environment and culture uh, things uh, Rather, it's not as we would like to. It's not as fast that I would like to be. Um, another, uh, I would say, because we have people working uh, in. Uh, we have people in 
different continents of the world. We have people in US also to manage the time, to manage the agreement, uh, to basically to, 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 to manage people. I mean, uh, it was a bit tough and then rushing if, and wondering if we could make it in the end. Like, if we could actually bring people to the ground and then to, to push people to full commitment, it was, it was quite an experience. Uh. Um, so back then, uh, 3D printing was still new. It's it it has been pictures as somewhat uh, toys, like you know, for kids and all. Um, so, but then again, there is a, this group of believer, like people who, who think that it has a big potential, uh, think that it could it could revolutionize uh, manufacturing. So now these days, everybody is talking about like industrial revolution 4.0, 4.0, and all. But back then, you know, it's not as been spoken widely. Uh, but the thing with 3D printing is that it could. Um, personify the manufacturing process. You can do um, individualized manufacturing process on the ground. Also, it could cut like you know, the logistic cost. We need to understand uh, in war torn region, like you know, the war, the bomb trauma is not as a simple, like you know, clean cut uh, motor vehicle accident trauma amputation that we see here in our country, where whereby um, if someone has got into got themselves into accident, you know, the surgeon uh, in in the surgeon in charge would can easily you know cut cut. Or I mean, if if the limb can be salvaged or not salvaged, if the limb is not sal it's not salvageable, they could cut like you know the the the, the hand clean right, like you know, so that it would be easy for for person like pro prosthetician to, to attach the limb, uh, the, 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 the artificial limb to the hand. Whereby in, uh, in uh, war trauma, you know, you have like landmines, you have, you have uh, you know, bombs and then all of this, you know, cause rather very complicated uh, fracture or rather very complicated uh, fracture to work with. What I did was that, you know, it's a POC, uh, proof of concept. Uh, what I did was a proof of concept project to show people, to gather everyone in the prosthetic care management, uh, in the prosthetic care stakeholder in the in that part of the world. Um, uh, we I I brought like engineers, uh, prosthetic uh, brought surgeon, prosthetic uh, officers, prosthetic uh, clinicians, as well as people from health department uh, to go through uh, this one week. Um, one week uh, experiential learning whereby um, they, they work uh, um, whereby I brought like uh, two patients for them to work on by themselves through, through, through this, this, uh, this workshop and they have like the hands-on uh, experience and they could now they could understand the, the, the power of the printing. We started with one printer um, and now uh, we after the success of the, 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 the workshop uh, we received funding from Ministry of Rehabilitation uh, from Sri Lanka. Uh, we managed to get grant and we opened a center in University of Jaffna, in Faculty of Engineering in University of Jaffna. Now they have four, five. They have five printers. Um, so currently, the center is administered by University of Jaffna's researchers, um, and there is ongoing collaboration with authorities out there. 
uh, in their particular specific area. As well as I'm very happy that uh, the centre is funded by relevant few, uh, few relevant ministries out there. Even to this day, um, actually quite fascinated and quite amazed the fact that uh, something in here can actually be out there uh, when when you put like hard work into it. So I'm, I'm actually very, very intrigued by that. And the second thing, um, I'm actually quite humble uh, by the fact that, you know, something that's, that was totally in my mind uh, now could actually have the potential of uh, helping uh, make uh, life better for, for hundreds of thousands of amputees in Sri Lanka, as well as its potential to be in wider wider conversation and wider progress of, of prosthetic care in the whole world and hopefully uh, it would give like some little then to the lives of millions of amputees in the world.